Australia has said it aims to cut its carbon emissions to net zero by 2050. And this joins other countries around the world in promising to make the nation carbon neutral by then. The real issue is how, and our answer is technology. Technology will have the answers to a decarbonised economy. But what kind of technology? I don't think there is one silver bullet. Professor Thomas Mashmeyer was awarded the Prime Minister's Prize for Science in 2020 for his work on renewable energy and plastic waste recycling. He says while there's been plenty of talk about things such as carbon capture, the biggest game changer has been the rapidly falling price of solar energy. What other thing has decreased in price by 95% over a period of 10 years? That is enabling as input a whole lot of other technologies. That includes energy storage, such as his own battery creation, G-Lion, which thanks to its zinc bromide composition, can work in tough environments, such as agricultural or remote communities. But G-Lion can also support the deployment of another emerging technology, green hydrogen. Our battery is our natural partner for solar battery electrolyzer to generate the green hydrogen. Most of the buzz around green hydrogen has centred on electric cars and trucks, but it can also be used to replace coal in steel refineries. Swapping out coal to make steel is something Professor Vina Sahajwala is already doing at UNSW. Our green steel technology is all about showing that we can actually use materials like waste tyres in the process of making steel. Her polymer injection technology, which extracts hydrogen and solid carbon from old tyres, has been used in the production of more than 30 million tonnes of steel around the world. Professor Sahajwala is now even experimenting with using waste coffee as a source of carbon. Traditionally, of course, the world always thinks that you need coal and coke to produce these metals. And what we are doing is completely shifting the mindset and saying that the production of green materials is absolutely possible in a way that it not only enables us to recycle our materials, but also enables us to bring green manufacturing to life anywhere in the world using Australian science. But Professor Mashmeyer cautions that science takes time. You have the idea, you've got to patent the idea in some form, you've got to build the team, you got to validate and verify whatever your mousetrap is. It also takes money, and Australia currently spends less on research and development as a proportion of GDP than the OECD average. There need to be an investment and a political framework. The settings of that framework will help to accelerate or decelerate progress. The Australian Academy of Science. Because questions need answers.